Welcome to the show. I'm James. I'm David. I'm Riley. <laughs> and uh, today we are discussing the Batman from director Matt Reeves. It's 2022. We will laugh. We'll argue. We might get a little too into it. We will assuredly get a little too into it. At the end of the day, they're just movies. Spoiler alert! <laughs> And according yeah. to a recent five-star review from a user called Hackerman, um, mm-hmm. just know before listening that Riley doesn't like any movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, Hackerman, I'm about to hack your brain he's right a, now. He's oh. a critic, not a lover. Exactly. <laughs> Next week, we're going to do not a movie review, but instead another kind of uh, mailbag listener questions, ask me anything kind of episode. A male-focused so, mailbag. <laughs> <laughs> we could... We could channel. We could be in drag. <laughs> we could. Sure. That's true. I was gonna write that question in for us. I was gonna. What's your? What would be your drag name? Can you? Pl- can you guys wear drag? And he sends it in anonymously. <laughs> what would be your drag name? Is a. I know your answer. I know, that, my but answer. I have it ready. Do you remember my answer? Oh, uh, no. I Someone don't. Someone should ask us that. You could ask us uh, by emailing or tweeting. We're gonna give you our handles at the end of the episode, like we always do, mm-hmm. or they're in the description below. But for now, let's just get into Batman. The Batman. The Batman. The Batman. The Batman. The Batman. I, I haven't learned this new voice. I can only do the Christian Bale one. Yeah, it's all the same. All right. Um, am I supposed to tell you? A s- oh, yeah, this it's part me. of the show. Yeah. David, <laughs> give us your rating out of 10. The Batman is the darker, gritty reboot 2022 needs of the darker and gritty reboot tw- 2005 needed of the darker and gritty <laughs> reboot 1989 <laughs> needed of the 1966 movie. This left me with three questions. When does the Batman with Batman spinning across all the multiverse release? Mm. Two, how much darker can the color black get? And three... How many more times must we watch The Dark Knight stumble in the third act? Oh. 8.3 to 10. Oh. 8.3. But after all that, it's an 8.3. It's good. I, I like this getting... movie. It's all the hype. Like, it's better than The Dark Knight. It's yeah. like, no, it's not. You're just recency biasing it. Mm, but uh, mm. it's good. Yeah. Just it falls apart in that third act. Man, man. I, was really, struggle. I was really scared when you were... I thought that was really leading up to something. <laughs> it was going to be a drop. Tell us, Riley. Um, it's the movie Batman fans deserved, but not the one we needed right now. <laughs> But it was pretty good anyway. What does that mean? It's a quote from The Dark Knight. I understand that. <laughs> is that all it is? <laughs> <laughs> I'll explain it. Okay. Uh, Later, though. This movie is like, remember when we did this? When we did Seven and it was like, oh, this could be a Batman movie. This is very, se- and then, I thought it was like Seven. And then they did a Batman movie that's basically very much inspired by Seven. Hmm? It's a life's a circle, man. Wheel of time. Uh, that would be an eight. <laughs> yeah, this is a 7.8 for me. I liked it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think I I completely agree. The last third of this thing, I'm just like, which is an hour long. <laughs> <laughs> this thing's three hours long. Too it's too long. long. Anyways. No intermission anymore. I, I liked it despite <laughs> all the crap happening in the last bit. James, what's up with you? At least they didn't give us an opening credits thing to sit through as well. They just put the Batman just in the first like That's two true. seconds. Get Thank that out of the that. way. I just noticed you have a middle part. Thank you. Nice one, man. <laughs> wow. Are you a Gen Z? I'm just trying to uh, look greasier. <laughs> Why make a multiverse movie when you can have a single movie for every conceivable version of a character? The the Batman gives us yet another cape, cowl, and car, and yet it was still original, still unique, still awesome. Mm. Hell yeah. This movie rules. I I liked it a lot. Uh, I liked it less as I went on, but 8.8 out of 10. 8.8? It was awesome. Wow. There's some awesome stuff. I'm pretty sure I gave like the recent Spider-Man movie an 8.9 or something. Like It was at least as good as that. Very different, but... um, Okay, so we all liked it, but there's definitely some room for discussion here. This movie's awesome, but yeah, there's some room for a discussion right after this message from our sponsor. Storyblocks. Mm. Ever needed a quick clip for a video but didn't have the capacity to make it yourself? Storyblocks helps you bring your stories to life without sacrifice due to time, budget, or resource. Dad, there's over a million royalty-free assets for you to choose from, including 4K HD footage, Adobe templates, music, images, and a wide array of diverse and inclusive content. There are subscriptions for every budget, so you can choose the plan that works for you from their unlimited all-access plan that gives you, you guessed it, unlimited video and audio downloads to enterprise licensing, so your entire company has access to the assets you need. You know, it won't be a pain in the asset anymore. (laughs) So take your videos to the next level by checking out Storyblocks today at storyblocks.com slash carpool. Okay. They haven't updated that. Thanks to Secret Lab for sponsoring today's episode. Secret Lab chairs are engineered to keep you comfortable for long hours at work and play, and they're under my butt right now. Their Titan Evo 2022 series chair offers four-way lumbar support. Didn't even know my back could go that way, you know? <laughs> Comes with magnetic memory foam head pillow and is offered in different upholsteries like hybrid leatherette, soft weave fabric, and Napa leather, which I'm pretty sure is what Batman's suit's made of. <laughs> with up to a five-year extended warranty and a 49-day return policy, you're covered if anything goes wrong. So learn more about Secret Lab at lmg.gg slash secret lab. EJM. These chairs are literally bulletproof. Don't 
Don't shoot them, though. No, don't repeat that. <laughs> Not true. They're just movies supported by Manscaped, the best in men's below-the-belt grooming. Manscaped offers precision-engineered tools for your family genitals, including their fourth-generation trimmer, the Lawnmower 4.0. It's new, What you know, they should have just called it the Lawnmower. <laughs> that's, what people, that's what people are doing these days. Its new wireless charging system removes the need to bring cables with you and is compatible with most G charging pads. The Lawnmower 4.0 includes ceramic blades with skin safe tech, reducing nicks and cuts on your sack. It's cordless, it's waterproof, it gets 90 minutes of use on a full charge. I love inserting vulgarities into this ad read because I can. Head to manscaped.com slash TJM20 to get 20 percent off and free shipping today there's not a many times in our job where you can be where you can do that and be thematically consistent yeah i guess so. talk them in they're the ones who make any other time is just rude <laughs> this one go for it the whole brand is about shaving the balls mm, and i'm gonna go for the synopsis okay we'll have a ball <laughs> billionaire bruce wayne maybe you've heard of him <laughs> I want to talk about that later, actually. The may Let's put a pin in the maybe yeah. you've heard of it section. Has been dressing up as a bat for two years when the Red Redler, I wish, <laughs> the Riddler murders the mayor of Gotham City and leaves a message for him. The communist Riddler. <laughs> though, <laughs> though Batman has an uneasy relationship with the police, Lieutenant Gordon works with him on the case, discovering that the Riddler is targeting corrupt officials. At a nightclub, Bruce questions the Penguin, a mobster working under Carmine Falcone, who pleads in ignorance. But then Bruce meets Selena Kyle, a waitress looking for her missing roommate, Annika. The two form an alliance as the Riddler kills his second victim, the police commissioner. His third is District Attorney Gil Coulson, who dies by collar bomb for failing to name an informant despite Bruce's attempts to help him. His name was Gil Coulson. Right. No, it was Cole Gilson. <laughs> no, whatever. <I> wish. <laughs> Following the Riddler's clues, Gordon and Bruce learn that the Riddler has a grudge against the Wayne. The Waynes. The Wayne Man. The Batman. The Wayne. Bruce races back home, but is too late to stop his butler slash surrogate dad, Alfred, from being hospitalized by a bomb meant to make Bruce pay for the sins of the father. Bruce questions everything when the Riddler alleges that his father, Thomas, had Falcone kill a journalist to protect family secrets. But Alfred explains that Thomas didn't know Falcone would resort to murder. How would he know that? He's just a mobster. Later, Selena tells Bruce that Falcone is her father. And this is where it gets real crazy. After learning that Falcone strangled Annika to stop her from revealing that he was the informant. She goes to the nightclub to kill Falcone and is stopped by Bruce, but then the Riddler snipes him anyway before being arrested. After rejecting the Riddler's offer to team up, Bruce discovers the Riddler's plan to set off car bombs around Gotham flooding the city. But he's too late, and that happens, leading to a battle with the Riddler's followers. Uh, he succeeds. Selina decides to leave Gotham while Bruce aids in recovery efforts, learning that vengeance isn't everything. You need some hope, too. And then the happy music plays. The vignette closes. That's the Batman. Mm. <laughs> Did it close like that? No. I didn't <laughs> no, it didn't. It was just like, uh, it was like, I, I really like that ending where it's like, hey, it's not just about vengeance. It's blah, 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 hope. Oh, man. When the third yeah. act, when it hits that, that point where he realizes that he doesn't, he shouldn't just be violence and yeah. vengeance, and he realizes, like, he needs to be a hero. Yeah, that actually got me emotionally. I was yeah. like, "Ooh, this is a good moment." That it's was a, a great cool arc moment. because it it had like a started off as a very personal arc, and then it kind of went broader and, yeah. and like it became more like a principled. Yeah. So the beginning of the arc was, uh, if I can't affect a change, I don't care what happens to me. Yeah. But then later on, with Alfred and with Catwoman, he kind of realizes, I don't want other people to suffer again. Like I I I want to live for others. Yeah. Mm. I care about what happens to Alfred, and yeah. if Alfred cares about me, then I care what happens to me and then that expanded out to i can't just be being batman just to beat up people and make me feel good yeah. i need to inspire hope in others and make um, gotham I, better especially after the perversion of the riddler follower who's like i am vengeance yeah and he gives that look and you're just like oh they turned it on him yeah, it's yeah. Cool. Yeah. It. yeah they got him and there. i think this arc really uh relates to something that is my that that makes me love this movie so much which is that it really feels like these are batman fans like the people that made this movie mm -hmm. like Especially the opening, man. That whole like creepy intro so where you're cool. introduced to the Riddler and uh, you you watch Bruce kind of moving through the cities in plain clothes, and then he like has that initial fight with those with those guys. It just all seems like so very comics Batmany. Oh, totally. And, with like, the narration, yeah, that was yeah. sweet too. With the the whole concept of I'm not there. Yeah. But I could be there. I love that. Yeah. That was awesome. the darkness. And you understand says, why people are scared of the dark. Yeah. When the light when that light hits the sky, it's not just a call. It's a warning. Yeah. Fear. It's a tool. They and, think I'm hiding in the shadows, but I am the shadow. Oh man. And it's, they did a lot of audience uh inferiority where we we don't know. 
We yeah. don't know which one of those is. shadows is going to come out. Oh, of. Man, it's yeah. such a cool moment when the 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 Joker gang is going to beat up that dude, and you just hear like the slow walking out, and you're like, "What is that?" And it's just like the rhythmic like, Duh. yeah. Duh. And he walks out of the the dark, and like he, you're like, "Okay, he's going to fight these dudes," but he kicks the shit. The fights yeah. are sick. Out of the first dude, the just like fights are punch, great. Punch, punch, I and love it feels how so heavy. It's, it's sick. so brutal. Like yeah. he's like he, he he he's down, and then yeah. he punches him, and then he just gets another two, and like boom yeah. boom. Yeah, <laughs> like, I love yeah, that. Yeah, the hits are so hard in this movie. Plus, yeah. there were some D box seats nearby or something, Ooh, so I was like, like getting some, <laughs> some kind of a, like. You got some vicarious rumble. Yeah, yeah. that's right. A proximity <laughs> shake. Oh man, uh, I love the intro with uh, Riddler too. It's, it's oh, when he's like watching. Yeah, yeah. But Yo. let's stay on Batman, I guess, for a second. Yeah. Yeah, I have a question about that watching thing later on, but um, yeah, we could basically go through the different elements of this, like the suit. Yeah. Right. How do you feel feel about the suit? You talk about comic book feel of this movie. I feel like the suit contributed to that because it, it looked like it was drawn with like a like a thick horse pencil. Yeah, like totally. A, it was a heavy you know? suit. It wasn't like the the Nolan kind of agile. Yeah. Like it had a flat nose, yeah. not a sharp nose. Yeah, it was, it was pressing down on his nose, which I found interesting. Well, you know when he took the, I think the he mask hit... off, the cowl off, his nose is kind of just like that. Yeah, he does have sort oh, okay. of like a squished nose a oh, little maybe, bit. Maybe. Yeah. And it works. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like that they tried to make things feel more grounded but kind of comic book at the same time like the, the batmobile is like it's like a real car but it I kind of just feels so cartoony i liked it yeah yeah i like liked the car muscle a lot. car batmobile yeah there's so, like a jet in it yeah it yeah. fits this like he's young batman this is batman origin because that it's you know it's funny like seeing all these movies like go through different iterations of like okay you know you know the old batman with like the sleek cool batmobile and now we have like the grounded Batman where all of his gadgets are based on real things and stuff and blah, blah, blah. But like the tumbler is still kind of like a crazy, like it's not, you wouldn't expect, it looks weird on the street. Yeah. But then the bat, this Batmobile is like, it looks like he literally just took a cool muscle car and added a jet engine and added some stuff to it. Stuff, yeah. yeah. And so it's like, it's cool just seeing like the different iterations, like in this universe, this is what this Batman looks like. Yeah, I know. It's just like this infinite possibilities. It's yeah. really interesting. Yeah. Cool that they can keep reinventing it. Yeah. What do you guys think of that bat glider? Which is, because that, that, they, mm. they spend a lot of time in the Nolan ones establishing how it's like a bat glider, but it just like, it's his, it's his cape that hardens. Yeah. But in this, they it give inflates. him like a proper inflatable wingsuit, yeah. which is more realistic. That was just like, but I didn't need it. I found it like. His suit just like inflated and then he went off. Yeah, right? which is cool. I, I thought it was kind of a cool twist because he, he's running from these cops. He goes up to the top of the building. We've seen this so many times. Batman's running away. He's going to glide off the edge of the building. But instead what happens is he gets to the edge and goes, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, and he's like, whoa, different. that's a big drop. And then he has to take the time to involve. Like, yeah. I liked how cool. that seemed a little bit more realistic than like, I'm just going to jump off and magically my cape is wings now, yeah. you know? And then I, like, <laughs> <laughs> and then I liked uh, how he bails at the end I yeah that, that was a good bail it was a very impactful bail no pun intended hey. but uh the thing is it was, the guy beside me was like why did he do that because he's just he's about to go out of this overpass yeah and he opens his parachute yeah <laughs> it was like, i like what, i like seeing like he's he's been batman for two years so he's not like old grizzled he's seen all the shit there is to see he's still learning things he's still sort of young so i feel like him going under that bridge to try and like land on that bus or something, but then like, it's like he gets cocky. Yeah, maybe. And he's in a he's in a high stress situation or whatever. So then he just like thinks that he's gonna make it and he doesn't. <laughs> he does not. Make a charitable it. view. Yeah. No. I, yeah, we should just talk about this for a second. It's it could fit in between like Batman Begins and Dark Knight, but I think it's decidedly in a whole other timeline. Yeah. Because they established oh, pretty course. early on that it's an very early on that the. The murder of the Wayne family is an unsolved case, whereas in the Nolan universe, we know that Joe Chill did it. Yep. And oh that, yeah. That's just no. This is 100 percent like alternate universe reboot. Completely, yeah. yeah. For sure. Um, but it's cool because it has all the same characters. You know, we're talking about Maroni still. We're still talking about. Yeah. Paul I mean, that, yeah. Those are like mainstays of like just part of the mythology. Um, I was just gonna say still about that fight. Uh, in the beginning, I I love how it shows him. Like he gets like a few punches in. Like he get, takes down the first guy, and then he goes to the the group. And they surround him, and he takes on like two or three guys at once. There's still two guys behind him, and as he's taking on the two or three guys, they get hits in. Yeah, like he gets hit, and he and he and he feels it, you know. And I love it. Like right away, it it just felt visceral. Yeah, like we're scared of him. He's a monster. He is the shadows, but he's also human, and we see that tension right like right oh. away. I love how 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 they were right well, up front with that. Totally, it's much more fun when your heroes are vulnerable. Yeah, uh, and he doesn't have that grace that like comic book Batman has, where he's like invulnerable. He's like yeah. invincible. Uh, this guy 
takes punches because he's young and his body can handle it, but yeah. we don't know for how long. Yeah, and he's also he's such a brute, too. Like, he grabs in the club when he grabs the guy's baseball bat and just yeah. bounces it off his forehead. I was like, that was Man, awesome. And there's some good fights. In Honestly, I think the coolest Batman moment in a movie ever is in this movie, and it's later on when the, the lights go yeah. out and he's fighting all the dudes and the only thing illuminating is the gunfire and he's dispatched everyone except the last two people and they just start firing at him and he just fucking walks <laughs> towards them like a tank. Yeah. And I was like, this is the sickest Batman moment I've ever that seen. That yeah. sequence is insane. It's yeah. almost like, I mean, the movie just came out, but I feel like it's underrated. It just oh, yeah, it goes by it. so fast. I'm wondering like, I feel like that's the filmmaker's favorite scene. Oh, totally. Yeah. And it's just it's like 10 so seconds cool. long. They probably spent days on that. Yeah. I think what I love most about this movie is how it makes the idea of Batman scary again. Mm. Like, <laughs> the overall arc of Batman as a character has gone from this, like, wearing blue tights, like, kind of like the 1950s show. Like, it's being a, he's a joke to, like, the gritty reboot in the 90s. And... But like we've, it's become super normalized, especially with like the Nolan trilogy. By the end of it, you're just you're not scared of Batman anymore. You're just like, oh, this is just Christian Bale in a suit, and it's like it, by that point, it's looking kind of dorky. Like it's like his suit and stuff is almost like it looks. It it gets better. It's more like military tactical style by the end, but it still kind of looks like Tim Burton esque think, a little bit. And I this one, it's like he's scary again. In the Nolan trilogy, the scariest Batman moment is the first time he's full Batman, where right. he's at the docks with yeah. People. And where are like, you? Yeah, where are you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, this movie felt like moment. it it maintained it had that tone and the it maintained whole, it for all totally. the f- like a, well not the whole movie but like there are numerous fights where we still feel that like fear on the part of the criminals. Yeah. And I think uh something that also stuck out to me was when he's in the crime scene and he's walking around and it's like he's just like brooding. He's he's so so like slow as he walks around and people are like looking at him like giving him like like they think he's a freak. And some people are like, oh, I hate that guy. But other people are just like, oh my God, fucking Batman. Yeah. And it's like, he, he speaks in like very little he, words. Yeah, he's so like he seems non-verbal. More, he's nothing. more animal than man. I like to, that they spend a lot of time showing you how smart he is without it being like overboard. Like sometimes when they make him the world's greatest detective, they go like, and he just makes like leaps of logic that are just a little too far. But in this, like you're with him the whole way. Yeah. And he's he's smart, and but he supports the police. Like one of my favorite moments is early on, when he's at the the mayoral death crime scene, and he just walks by where the we- the the murder weapon landed, and he just kind of like looks at the bloody mark, and then the cops are like, oh, and she takes like there's the photographer just takes a photo of it, and yeah. it's like just such a quick subtle moment, but he's like he's not there for glory, he's there to like help them, right? And I was like, oh, nice. Yeah, he's not there to be like you guys don't know what you're doing. Yeah, I'm Batman. He's yeah. like, oh, you should have noticed. <clears throat> no, yeah, I like it, big fan. His characterization is really interesting because. I think it differs from a lot of the other Batman uh, iterations that we've seen because he's like socially awkward a he, bit. He's like the most obsessed Bruce Wayne. Yeah, we've seen. I I would say like even his hair length. It looked a little too long for a, a Playboy yeah. billionaire. Yeah. So I read that I read that um, Matt Reeves based his uh, kind of elements of his character on Kurt Cobain. Interesting. Yeah, and he based um, the Riddler on the Zodiac Killer. So, which makes sense, yep. but it's kind of funny that you like you would not expect to have Bruce Wayne be influenced character-wise by Kurt Cobain. Yeah, uh, but I love it. I love it. Like I, I do. There were times where I missed the sort of like suave Bruce, uh, Bruce Wayne character. Like we don't get at that at all. Like Zero. I think they, like people come over to have a business meeting or something, and it just skips right past it. We don't see him be Bruce Wayne. I, I yeah, I really thought that they talked about that meeting was going to happen. Yeah. And then those people like arrived. We didn't even see them. Yeah. And they just went past. I was like, why right. did they even? Because I think it's him. like, I think that they're just not interested in showing us like. Even when the meeting comes to Wayne Manor, yeah. he still doesn't go. I think that <laughs> it's illustrated in the in the later scene when the Riddler says, "I w- like this is the real you. What I'm looking at. Like I know that I this is this is you. So it's like it's almost like the movie acknowledges that the Bruce Wayne persona is not really this character. We don't need to show you that. We just want to show you Batman. Or maybe the reason they threw that in the movie was to demonstrate how Bruce is kind of, uh, he's shirking his responsibilities at Wayne Manor. Right. And yeah. that's actually why Bruce Wayne is targeted by the Riddler. Right. He, the sins of the father. He's He has this uh, legacy of the renewal project that he's not, he hasn't done anything to turn it around I love make that, it better either. I love that angle that they take where it's like he's been so obsessed with being a crime fighter that he's let the city go and like it's like he needs to to find the balance. I will say on terms in terms of Bruce Wayne, I think the movie 
let me down a little bit in giving him like more range to work with. Yeah. I found his performance is good as Batman, especially, but as Bruce Wayne, I found there was moments of, I just wanted like a little more emotion from him. Like that scene with Alfred after the explosion, I was like, oh, nice. Here's the moment he's just going to open up a little bit. But like the most he does, he's like, he's not even addressing Alfred. He's like, the pe I don't want to see the people I care get hurt about. It's like, he's talking in general terms, not like Alfred, I love you or like Alfred, yeah. I care about you. And I wanted, I wanted him to like give me just like resonate at a different frequency than he does as Batman. Right. No, I think I I feel like I agree with you. I think I missed that side of uh, this character a little bit because it is kind of interesting in Batman stories to see the like the two sides of him. Like obviously he's out there on the streets and he's being the scary Batman guy, but then when he gets home and he takes off the suit, you know, it's like sometimes we see him be a little bit warmer, you know. Mm. But this guy comes back home and he's like rude to Alfred. He's like, "Remember, you're not my father." Like right yeah. in the beginning, and I I wrote down like, "Ooh," he said. Because that's in Dark Knight. Uh, what is, when does he say that? Rises, Rises, I think. And I was like, oh, they brought that kind of arc back. I wonder if that's going to come back. And it does. And it, it it's, it's a great moment. But I'm just I picturing Michael Caine watching this movie <laughs> yeah. in the audience, just shaking his head like, oh. Bruce, you let me down again. <laughs> um, uh, what was I saying? Oh, but then he came. He, so he comes back. He takes off the suit. And he's still like a weird, awkward. So, but like, I, I like that characterization because. He's an orphan. He lost his parents. He hasn't really had parents, parents, and Alfred's done his best. But at the same time, he is a rich kid, and I think that we like we see this element of Bruce Wayne that we haven't really seen before, where he's like he's kind of spoiled. He doesn't really have like a realistic view of the world. Sometimes, you know, I think that his talk with Selena Kyle verges on a bit of a uh, like too too wokey for me sometimes. But like or overall, she I, says the words "white privilege" but, in a movie. It's a I little mean, it's, on the it's nose. a little on the nose. But I appreciate that 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 um, that theme in this movie. That like he is rich and he is different than the Riddler. The Riddler was a poor orphan and oh, he I struggled. Love I love that. But Bruce was like, "Oh, you lost your parents, but you're still a freaking billionaire." Yeah, looking down at us from your freaking ivory yeah, tower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The movie's really good at making. It's really actually of the time, and, and not yes. other other than the line we just talked about. Not that not the standing. I think it's like kind of subtle about it where throughout the movie there's this whole what's the difference between these vigilantes and you yeah and then the just the fact like that the the riddler isn't just one person he's a movement and he uses mm -hmm. social media and stuff to yeah. to attract these people and they have presumably some encrypted little shadow community where they're all talking openly and making these plans it's very insurrectionisty totally and yeah. uh that was just very, it's just very modern and natural now. And scarier. Oh, yeah. It's way scarier to be like, oh, there's 500 of these psychos yeah. than just this this one bad guy. And it's funny, up. yeah, because like, I feel like in the, some of the moments in the Dark Knight movies where the Joker has his like adherence, like people who are like, yeah, the Joker has the right idea, never really feels realistic because you're like, people aren't going to like come out and support the, somebody who's just like, who are these henchmen? For no reason. But the Riddler has. A reason he's like actually trying to like he you know he's a re he's a revolutionary yeah like when they rock up to i think it's the funeral or something there's like a protest of people all with signs yeah with like riddler iconography on it because they're anti-corruption yeah it's no it's more like, lies is their slogan i was like yes that yeah. exactly would happen today yeah. yep. no matter because there's yeah. there's half the population is always yeah <sighs> and i mean especially especially after a couple years of like protests for various different reasons and like we're seeing that people are willing to come out and potentially engage in like violent conflict you know so it's like uh i think seeing these guys come out like they're asking what caliber rifle they should get and stuff. yeah that and it was just, scary it feels it felt kind of real yeah, yeah. Like, i guess what i'm saying is everyone's an activist and um people just get totally radicalized now and yeah, uh, but it's, this guy's this guy's like super actually compelling because yeah. he is bringing down legit. What that's what I wrote. So is Riddler he's kind of doing a better job than Batman? Oh, one hundred percent. I was gonna say that exact thing. I wrote down like the Riddler is the hero of the people, and he's doing what Batman can't do because Batman's focusing on like violent crime on the streets, but like really to fix Gotham, you have to go for the white collar this, crime. Yeah. And like I love what they do with the Riddler's motivation and plot, and like you get it. I was like I was on board with him. Obviously not his methods, uh, and it's. Kind of a bummer when he just goes into Joker territory of just like chaos is good, and it's like that's I think that's big part of why the third act falls apart for me. Yeah, is the Riddler goes from like a really compelling villain with a point to just like I want to see the world burn. So do you think if he didn't target Real, 
would that have Bella said something Real, different? Because the he, mayor who I left out of the synopsis. Because she, that's another like. No, I think it's the it's the car bombs flooding the city that to me are like not really. Yeah, like Dark Knight Rises. It's like you want to you care yeah. about the city and you want to take down corruption, but so you hurt the people that are most the, vulnerable. Yeah, yeah, flood the normal people. Yeah, like, it should okay. have been like a terrorist plot that specifically targets like uh, some gathering of ultra rich or something. Batman movies always struggle with this. They always struggle to have, well, especially when they're trying to be like gritty, uh, you know, realistic things. They struggle with how to have big stakes while also having villains that you can understand doing these things. Like the Joker obviously works because he's just like crazy and he just wants to blow st- stuff up. But the Riddler, you know, like when we come at him from this perspective of this character has real motivations and he, like the things that he thinks make sense, even if he's wrong about some things, mm-hmm. like why, why it, it doesn't make any sense. Anyway, it's inconsistent. It, it makes sense like, for him to target Real because yeah. his whole if his whole thing is I need to change this system, it doesn't matter that a woman of color gets elected and she wants all this change. She is ultimately just a puppet of. But right. but she but I he mean her, see color. her whole her whole campaign <laughs> is running on uh, the rejuvenation fund or whatever is bullshit. So he, she is kind of coming from the same side he came from. Where yeah. She he knows that she's not part of the old system. Yeah. What, yet, yeah. That didn't make sense. He was trying to kill her. Yeah. So I, I found that was like a little bit just superhero y where it's like we need we need the biggest like action set pieces in the final act. We need the craziest shit. Yeah. I mean, so, like, I can't believe that she got shot. Actually, I didn't think a filmmaker would do that to right. this day and age. Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, I maybe maybe you could make an argument that like the Riddler was using the language of like uh, corruption and revolution and stuff to try and like organize these people to back him, but really he was just kind of like a wild, crazy guy, and he just wanted to. That's so much less damage. compelling. I know, I know, it is. But uh, let's talk yeah. about the good stuff about the Riddler, because yes. man, they nail a whole bunch. Paul Dano. Oh, he's so Dude, good. Dude, I actually just said out loud. It's always Paul Dano. <laughs> it's this, always Paul this Dano. This character, yeah. He's it's like, like, we need an A-lister who looks demented. Yeah. That's <laughs> Paul Dano. We need an A-lister who could play a convincing... It's yeah, him or Eisenberg. Weirdo serial killer. Oh, he's killer. so much better yeah. than Eisenberg. Man. Eisen- oh, like... Uh, Jesse. Lex right. Luthor. Oh, uh, Jesse Eisenberg. Oh, yeah, Lex yeah, Luthor yeah. or um, Zuckerberg. Yeah. yeah. I like this horrifying take they have on him. Like, it's very clearly Zodiac-y in terms yeah. of the messages, but... Uh, man, when he wears that mask, that voice, everything. Is yeah. Just like, it, the way he's killing people, oh, it's horrifying. It and really th- worked. I mean, there were definitely some times where I was like, okay, th- you can't really get away from the hokiness with Batman. Of like, course. you can try your best, but at the end of the day, a supervillain who gets people to answer riddles is pretty hokey and cheesy. Yeah, it I, happened I in like, real life. But like, but like, they did a- as good of a job as I think you yeah. could do. I like that scene when he's got Gil in the the collar and he's like on the call with everybody. Yeah. He's like he's relishing showing the world what he's about to do. Yeah. And like he traps him and like it's a kind of a sick moment where he's like he's like who's like I can't remember what he says. Tell me who the rat is. And the guy's like I can't. I'm gonna die. And like yeah. that whole sequence, I really like up until Batman gets really close to him when there's like five seconds left. But that's a, that's a, <laughs> a, a, not neither here nor there. Peter Skarsgård. I haven't yeah. seen him in a little bit. Yeah, yeah he's got. He's I always like he's always a creepy guy too. Yeah, I like him as an actor. <laughs> he got screwed over by Green Lantern, I think. Oh, I haven't seen him in a while. I was like, I, I recognize this guy. Another DC movie. What yeah, I, there was a lot of um, the violence was good. Like that opening, opening with him, like the voyeuristic view. We're looking oh. through these binoculars. Who's holding them? We don't know. And yeah. what are they looking at? The yeah. breathing. Yeah, that was very creepy. It grounded the movie and made you feel like... Oh my gosh. It just puts you inside the that villain. That shot where the mayor is watching the TV and then he steps away and Paul Dennis yeah. is standing behind him and you're like, oh! Yeah, it's like, shocking. That was a good moment. And then that's not... He doesn't interact with him for a long time. So yeah. then we have this audience superior position where it gives us so much suspense because we yeah. know something is going to happen. Yeah. That's, it, it, it really Terror. just felt like... It, they did a really great job of making the beginning of this movie just feel like a horror movie or like a thriller. Or Question though about the binoculars thing... Um, Later on, we get that same view through the binoculars, watching Selina. Yeah, and that like turns out to be Batman, though. It's a slightly different uh, like shape. HUD. Of, shape of binocular was different. Yeah, I don't know if the actual binocular was different, but the HUD that they have up, like the number counter with the distance, was different. Oh, okay, I yeah. didn't notice that, and I was like, wait. Uh? I want to say that it was intentional. I feel like it was to draw like a parallel between yeah, how must, Batman so. and the Riddler I are both kind of weirdos. A voice like that is definitely intense. The Batman scene is a little bit different because they take the time to give you the extreme close-ups of Batman to place mm-hmm. you with him. Right. But it's still not giving you like face of him. It's still like voyeuristic and creepy. Yeah. And he has his hood really up Really intimate stuff. Yeah. and stuff. Right. So it is supposed to be uncomfortable. Yeah. And oh. I think the reveal of him is like, at first you think it's the Riddler yeah. because it's the same thing. And then yeah. you see him, you're like, oh. And I think it's meant to draw a parallel. But 100%. 
I I really like the gadget with the the lens, the camera lens yeah. thing. Yeah. And then he, the scene where she's wearing it. Yep. That was awesome. Man, the way they shoot that's really brilliant too because like you don't see her perspective. You see his perspective through her eyes. So all the shots in the club, it's of her, but everything's bouquet. Like it's a really shallow depth of field. So you see the back of her head and her close up. Right. But then everything's through her eyes. It's him looking at the screen, but everything's kind of blurry. And so you're placed in the scene really clearly, but you're a participant as if you were from the outside. And it just changes the vibe. And it's yeah. like really a brilliant way to shoot that scene. Yeah. And the close You have like the same anxiety he has. Totally. You just don't have that much information. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. I was just going to say, I think that, yeah, I, I think the close framing on her in the club scenes really like makes it feel as if it's like enveloping and like yep. suffocating a little bit. What and is- I really love how they have these differing, uh, uh, agendas. He's mm-hmm. like, yeah, yeah, keep talking to this yeah. guy. And she's like, nope, nope, my priority is over here. Yeah. I don't care about your stupid lens. Totally. That's how you He's make like, an no! adventure. That's how you make an adventure more interesting. Yeah. And it also makes when Gil approaches her just feel so much more comfortable because it's like first person and you're like, I don't want this dude talking to me. Yeah. Like, just back off. I love yeah, Look at them off. longer. I yeah. can't look back. <laughs> I love Damn that. It. <laughs> it's like, no, maintain eye contact. She's like, yeah. it's awkward. <laughs> you don't understand what males interpret that as. Yeah. I really like Selena Kyle. I think they did a really good job making her interesting without falling into the like over sexualized cat lady best right best portrayal of catwoman ever He's best great. dynamic yeah. between batman and catwoman ever i i always always kind of cringed like when i found out catwoman was in rises i was like oh no here we yeah. go yeah and hathaway was i don't think a really great cast for that and then i thought that i thought that anne hathaway was uh, was okay like for that like it's a different vibe you know it's a different uh feel to that movie where it's like we're embracing at that point. We're embracing like the hokiness of Batman a little bit more than we used to, but in this one, it felt still very grounded. Totally. In this one, you could tell like, okay, she she bought her suit from a store. Yeah. And her mask is just like a toque. That's weird. Yeah, and it kind of um, has weird cat bumps, but like just a little. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. They never say the words Catwoman. Yeah. They they do. They kind of toe the line. Like she drinks some milk at some point. Yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> okay. We're getting well, too close. At least she pours the milk for the cat and then drinks it herself. So it's like, okay, maybe you're just having the drink. Yeah, I think they do a good job with her power level yes. too. Yes. Where... He, he like immediately just bests her. Yeah. yeah. But like, she's still a badass fighter. And right. She beats a bunch of other. She's people. a badass fighter, but like the reigning champ featherweight can't take on the reigning champ light heavyweight. So yeah. Well, not without a bunch of training. I think maybe in like the yeah, third. Yeah, but movie, they're both could... really trained. That's, That's the thing, right? That's so if he just weighs more, then he should beat her. Especially because he has the jump on her, prizes her. I li- oh, I like you know what was really awesome? When uh, he's in that room with her, they're having their first interaction, and then he gets her in like a rear naked, like kind of a choke from behind. He's holding her, and then uh, a guard comes in. Oh yeah. So he- they have to wait and be quiet. That's awesome because it's simultaneously we have to spoon it's for a second. violent, but it's intimate. So yeah. it's like they're fighting, but they're hugging. Yeah. And that is just such a great like microcosm for their totally. relationship. And I like that her motivation is to get her friend's passport to help her escape. And that's such a good... I love that journey of, of Selena trying to just help her friend and then finding out she's dead. I kind of and... thought that was her lover. I think that's kind of the... I think that's the... Uh, I think she's bisexual. Yeah. Canonically, she's bisexual. Yeah. Well, she calls her babe and stuff. Yeah. 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 So her partner. Nice. There it yeah. is. Yep, yep. Um, I, uh, one thing I appreciate in this movie, sort of going back to Batman, is how they use him for humor without him being silly. Uh, like, they just like kind of get the punchlines off him. Like, the, the example that like, comes to mind is when I think Gordon's like, we're going to have to get a warrant for that. And he's like, yeah. And then he punches a hole through the window or something. Uh, and so it's like, he's always very serious. But the movie ne- the movie isn't like dreary. Like it has jokes uh, and yeah. humor. And so I appreciate that there's some funny moments using Batman's over seriousness. Yeah. I don't really remember any of them. I think I laughed, oh. I laughed once though, for sure. The the I, I, I Thank you for bringing that up because I had a note uh, just that, that just said, oh, this guy's hilarious. And I forgot what point in that movie that is. And it's when... They find the thumb drive. Oh, oh yeah, and yeah, then yeah. and then he's like, "Oh, it's password protected." And he holds up the thumb. He's like, "Try this." And then he like it it slides open, and there's a fingerprint scanner. And he's like, "Oh, this guy's hilarious." <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, nice, some humor." I think that was yeah. the first bit of humor there's in like the movie. Couple... And I was like, "Okay, there's going to be some. That's yeah. good." <laughs> yeah, it never felt like they never took. Yeah, it felt like it was a good balance. This very dark, very intense movie. I just wish it wasn't so PG thirteen. There's mm. a couple times where you're like. Ah, some blood there would have been cool. That's fair. I, I wish I, I wish there was an unrated version that got released. They, they See, might still do it's that. It's PG thirteen, but it doesn't really feel like it. Like I, like it because the whole mood is so dark and yeah. so like there's just like tension and weight all the time. I I didn't feel like I was like, oh, they're pulling punches for the kids, you know? Like yeah, well, there's a couple like an example, like the car wreck. The car wreck is shocking. Yes. Yeah. But it's I, not gory. 
It's not gory, so but for, it, but it is a moment where you're like, holy shit. Oh yeah. Yeah. There's some hard hits in this movie, but like when he's like beating that guy's face into hamburger at the end. Be nice. And then he rips the mask off and shows the guy's face. He's like barely even hit. Yeah. I guess maybe because they well, wanted us to recognize him from the beginning, but like I thought the whole point there was that he was wait, just going overboard on the Recognize scene. him from the beginning. Well, he's the oh. guy from the, the funeral. Yeah, right. He wait, was who? right. The, the guy, guy who, who she, he looks at Bruce I'm Wayne and he goes he he looks at Bruce Wayne and he goes, Don't I know you? Oh, I'm pretty sure that was yeah. the same dude, yeah, right? It's the same dude that he was like that was kind of venting about the rich people. Oh, I did not realize yeah. that. Which I, I okay. that's a nice little touch. Another yeah. example would be when um he's got the DA in the car, the Riddler does, and he's attacking him from behind. They just pull it completely out of focus, so it blurs the whole thing. Yeah. So he's attacking him, but yeah. we don't really get to see. But that's if, true. There's some stuff, but though, I think that I think, worked. Yeah. It totally did yeah. work. Yeah, it, it makes it even kind of creepier in a yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. That's what I was. I thinking. think the movie does enough violence that your imagination, or I found myself with my imagination kicking in and almost filling in the blanks in a scarier way than right. having some overly violent thing. Yeah. So it's it's a give or take. I think that I think that is I the great to, success. I would have liked to have seen the face eaten by rats. <laughs> At least starting. I don't know. Starting. Like because like it is at the end of the day. It is Batman, you know? And so it's like, I don't know. I feel like the strength in Batman is is feeling the emotional weight of the character and, like, the themes and stuff like that and not so much, like, titillating you with, like, look at all this gore and blood. Like, I think that other things do that better. And I think Batman is there to be, like, he is a symbol of hope still, you know? Like, you don't want to be, like, completely nihilistic with y- this. You remind me of uh, Brian Singer on one of the X-Men 2 featurette interviews where he's like, at the end of the day, it's for the kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I would, I would, I would say that I like kids' content because, uh, and I like movies like this that acknowledge that. Because I don't think this isn't a kids' movie. No, no, not really. So, but, but it's still. I think that the reason that it pulls its punches is not for the kids. You can take your teenagers. I feel like you could make the argument that it does it for the kids, but I would make the argument that superheroes occupy, and particularly like the traditional. Superheroes like Batman, Superman, Spider Man, whatever. They occupy these spaces where you don't want to, in the mainstream version of the media, you don't want to take it too far. Like, you still want them to retain sort of the magic of their mythological status. And I think to like include the stuff that you're talking about, it, to, to literally make this movie into seven would be to take away from the character a little bit, would be yeah, to okay. soil it. So, yeah, you, so you think if there was like a. Like Lord of the Rings, is that a ki- for kids? No, it's for adults, it's for everybody. You know what I mean? Yeah. So if there was like a Superman movie where he just like grabs someone's, he puts his hand in someone's mouth and just like rips their spine out, it would just like taint the whole franchise. I, mean, I there, think that we can like, do that in animated movies. Yeah. I think that we can do that in comics. Well, there's the, lots of deconstructions that we yes. can do, like Watchmen or The Boys or something. Yeah. Where like Invincible. Batman, yeah, there's a, there's there, we can do that, but it I, I it doesn't didn't I didn't feel it missing in this. Yeah, I think that it's the same argument why you wouldn't want to have like <laughs> why people are kind of scared that Amazon is going to turn their Lord of the Rings show into Game of Thrones, where it's like. They're different things. Like, you don't want to make Lord of the Rings and be like, oh, it's Lord of the Rings, but it's edgy. Hobbit and, titties. But it's edgy and there's <laughs> boobs and penises and all this Wait, like, crazy stuff. nobody said anything about Hobbit titties. Yeah, I'm fucking in, man. <laughs> Harry nipples, yeah. buddy. Oh. See, I'm not in for Lord of the Rings, but bring another Game of Thrones thing out. Yeah, it's great. You know, it's like there are proper places for things, I've, in my opinion. I don't know. We'll see. I it. like it. I have, I have no conclusions about Lord of the Rings until I see it. Guys, what do you think about the Penguin? I loved him. Yep. Oh, yeah. I Colin fan. Farrell killed Unrecognizable. 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 Yeah, Unrecognizable. He's, he looked like a real person. There was a moment where I was like, this feels a little out of place for this movie to have like kind of like a New York accent, like mafioso, like old school style, like mobster. I, I felt a little f- Why? This movie is so no, noir. I didn't, yeah, I didn't think it felt out of place at all. Oh, like, no, I, I, I felt it, it, it became fine, and he was the source of a lot of humor, which was, uh, yeah, he was which nice. Was nice. <laughs> um, but I love that they leave him tied up, and he has to waddle like he a has penguin. To that was my favorite. That's I love that. <laughs> that, that was, was actually funny. that scene had one of the weirdest, most jarring, confusing parts. They're talking to him, and suddenly it's like a hard cut to the, the interface of a laptop, and yeah. they're in a chat. And I was like, oh, yeah. "Wait, what just happened? Yeah, are they gone? Did they Is just this a different leave? scene? Yeah, what? Yeah, that Very was strange. weird. Um, and also that was frustrating because the rat with wings. What could it mean? Blah 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 blah. Yeah. I like, thought of a bat. How about a bat? Immediately. Yeah, <laughs> it definitely frustrated me how long it took them. I think that's part of like the third act being kind of messy. Uh, I think that's one of like the big things. It's like, hmm, let's use our special detective skills. We got a police detective and Batman, and they can't figure out what a rat with wings might refer to. <laughs> like, you know, what this movie did masterfully though is using the audience's baggage. Like yeah. we know when we come into this movie, we know so much about Batman. We don't need to have a scene where we see his parents die. No. We don't need that at all. Um, but the, but it goes way beyond that, too. 
like for example, in his tape, the Riddler talks about unmasking, and we just think from having seen so many of these movies that Batman identity being exposed yep. is going to be central 100%. to this movie. And guess what? Bruce Wayne thinks that too. And then there's this whole reversal where it's we assume that he kno- the Riddler knows his identity and then it's found out. Uh, uh, no, he doesn't. He was just bitching about Bruce Wayne. He yeah. actually thinks Batman's just somebody else. Wait! Oh, no. What? You oh, didn't no. get it? I messed this. Wait. Yeah, I missed this. Wait. The Riddler you, didn't know that well, Bruce Wayne was Batman? I think, yeah. I think Batman? that scene begins and you're like, oh, he knows. Because he's like, Bruce Wayne. And you're like, oh, he knows. He knows. But then at the end, it's like, I don't think he knows. No, he doesn't. And then Batman realizes that too. But he, Riley does not. Wait. <laughs> wait. No. I thought he did because he's looking at the um the 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 board of all the like, the connections and stuff. He's got all the newspaper clippings or whatever, and the police are going around looking but at that's evidence. Be- that's before that scene, so I think it's like for to mislead the audience into thinking that he's figured out who Bruce Wayne. He might have, but it, I I no I, he's he doesn't. He says a line that proves that he doesn't. Okay. Wait, what? I forget. But, <laughs> but he says it. He says it. <laughs> oh man, it. I thought for sure. Uh oh, interesting. That changes. Well, it doesn't really change the movie. I guess. I thought that the movie was really smart when it was going through all the victims. Then we found out that Bruce Wayne was going to be the next one. I was like, oh, it makes so much sense that this is going to come down to being like that. He would be pivotal in this entire plot. That makes yeah. so much. That's so awesome that they did that. And then I'm totally on that train. And then it's like, nope, <laughs> it totally <laughs> upends it. Like, it, yeah. it, that was just like such a flip flop. That was great. Yeah, I, I even like that sequence too when he realizes that he's the next victim and he calls, but it's out. It's presented out of sequence, so he's calling and the phone is ringing. Yeah. And you're like, Oh man, Alfred, pick up, pick up. And then the lady's like, oh yo, he's been like, it exploded like an hour ago, dude. Yeah, that's the kind of tricking the audience that is good. I feel like there's a lot of times when movies do this kind of stuff and you're just like, you just did that for a cheap kind of trick. Well, I think it's how much time it goes on. So this movie is similar to the Silence of the Lambs approach where it's like they're closing in on that house. Right. Spoilers for Silence of the Lambs, check out our episode. But the next 10 seconds of this video is me me spoiling it. They're closing in on that house and you find out Starling's in a different location than they should. Oh, yeah. Right. And... And the thing is, the setup, this is no longer spoiler territory, you're safe. The setup and the payoff of the, of the reversal is a minute, mm, you know, yeah. and that's what happens in this movie. But I think if you're in a movie where it's like, it was all a dream, oh, the, so whole, the whole yeah. movie, that's yeah. when people yeah. get mad, right? Totally. Right. Totally. Um, I love that Bruce uh, is one of the victims, which leads into, or one of the victims, one of the targets, which leads into the conversation of, hey, you're part of the problem. Because this movie, you know, obviously a big theme is corruption and inequality and stuff. And I feel like we we got like a little little hints at that in previ- in like the Dark Knight trilogy, but it didn't really like fully investigate it. As far as I can I can't remember. I don't think it did. The fact that like, hey, Bruce Wayne, you're part of the problem. Like you're part of the corrupt elite or whatever. Not really. So I like I like the fact that at the very least, you know, we have this scene where Bruce is questioning his dad. He's like what have I been fighting for? Like my parents died and I've been getting revenge for their death. That, that's that been the entire reason for me being Batman. And he has that moment where he's just like, he questions everything. He like has a moment of doubt and he's just like, not even a moment. It's like a full thing where he's like, like nothing. I was, I was a fool, you know, I was fooled. And I think that it, I love that the movie embraces the gray because it's like, Hey, it doesn't fully reverse it where it's like, no, actually the Riddler's just trying to trick you. It's like, no, your dad did the shitty thing. Yep. Like your dad made a bad decision and it was a mistake. Uh, but he wasn't trying to kill people. Like, you know, he's not, he's yeah. not a monster. Falcone lied to you. I like yeah. when Alfred yeah. kind of revealed that stuff. That was all good stuff. Yeah, yeah. I think the movie does really succeed at, at part of its theme is giving people a chance where good people make bad decisions. Yes. Uh, and that's part of, I think the, the kind of payoff at the end where it's like, it's everything's not black and white. It is. It's and Batman's such a, a iconic black and white character right. in terms of having such a clear morality. And so it's, it's cool that they're making yeah. them a little more complex. Force Awakens. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> what? I feel like um, it's still a bit tenuous as to why Bruce would be a target. The whole sins of the father thing is that's a nice like uh, cliche, but well, it's, it's a bit tenuous. Well, yeah. I mean, I think that clearly the Riddler uh, has ideological motivations, or maybe he doesn't. But he certainly acts as if he has ideological motivations. But at the same time, he's not against like blowing up the city to make a point, you know. About- but just every other target before that was so clearly involved in this big. It's true. System. I think that's maybe like, like the, the DA, but I think, the yeah. police commissioner, yeah. but I think the mayor. Like, that, who's Bruce Wayne? He explains it a little bit by saying that he was envious of Bruce yeah. and how it's like not fair that he was personal. able to grow up with such okay, like a yeah. nice upbringing. Yeah. So he's like, yeah. I'm going to take you down a peg. Yeah. 
or kill you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, um, I oh, think, so, go ahead, no, go ahead. Sorry, just while we're on that, I I like how it leads up to him kind of questioning his own family's involvement and in all that stuff when he has a conversation with Selena where he like judges her or judges women like oh, her yeah, for yeah. like making hard decisions to like get into sex work or something when it's like maybe one of the only options available to them. And he's like, how did it feel like selling yourself for blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, oh, okay, this is interesting. He grew up rich. He judges sex workers. He's, yeah, Batman's a libertarian. It makes sense in this, in this universe. I, re- I really like, though, I can't remember if it's that scene or a later scene, when he says something and she's like, why, like, why are you doing this? And he like immediately apologizes. And he's like, I'm sorry for saying that. And I was like, that's an oh, interesting take on Batman that oh, he I apologizes that. for saying something that was wrong. And I was like, <laughs> I, like I like that. JK, I was just angry. No, no. I need to eat something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not myself when I'm angry. Uh, Snickers. Snickers. So I guess we've kind of worked through the characters. So there's no, Ca- we Carmine mode- Falcone. John Turturro. He was great. Out of choice. nowhere. I thought it was good, actually. He's, I think he's an amazing actor. I have my baggage of... Of of Jesus Lebowski. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Nobody fucks with the Jesus. Well, yeah. He he so often plays comedic characters. It's a bit strange to see him in this like badass monster role. But he, he was good. good. Yeah, he was great. Yeah. Jeffrey, Jeffrey Wright, Wright. I liked him as Gordon. Totally. And he's got his own vibe. He's not like chasing the Gary Oldman thing, but he's good. And I I love that scene when Batman's been captured, which was stupid. But when all the cops are there when he wakes up and he's like defending him and he like pushes him against the wall. He's like, "Listen to me. We'll yeah. get out of this." And then he like he's like, "Okay, here's the key." Punch me really fucking hard and go that way. Yeah. Yeah. And then I thought you were gonna pull like, that punch yeah. or something. Yeah. I did. Yeah, that was awesome. He's great. I I didn't. I I thought that he could have like eased back on the gravelly voice a little bit sometimes. I mm. thought I thought it was not that gravelly. No, I just mean that. Although like, it wasn't very different than a speaking voice. It's not Bruce. so much like the quality of the voice, but the fact that he did it all the time. Like there wasn't really like what I liked about Gary Oldman's Gordon is that you could kind of feel you could. Oh, you I thought could you were hear, talking about Batman. Oh no, no, no. Oh, you're talking about well, Gordon. Okay. I, my point is that. The Batman and Gordon next to each other, they're both talking like this all the time. Well, what about this? Yeah, we could check that out. Blah, blah, blah. And it's like, okay, I'd like to see a little bit more dynamic range in your voice there. And I, that's what I liked about Gary Oldman's uh, Yeah, he didn't, he didn't do that's that. Fair. Yeah, I didn't find the Bat voice too bad, though. No, I, I never found it distracting. I was like, yep, it feels like it's just, that's a depressed Batman. How do oh we my. like Andy Serkis as, uh, as Alfred? Uh, yeah, he was all right. I feel like, I feel like, I didn't feel didn't, the love. He, yeah, he didn't wow me. I feel like Michael Caine is my is is Alfred. He's Alfred to me. Yeah. yeah. Jeremy Irons, that's the actor who did the last one, right? He's okay. I didn't like him as yeah, much. He's fine. Circus was good. I don't think, I think Andy Circus. I don't think he's meant to just do these like stern, stoic characters. I think Andy Circus shines best when he's, when he's being, like eating fish when he's being out wild. of a river. Yeah. It's <laughs> yeah. like Black Panther when yeah, he's I this like, like ridiculously eccentric like guy and he's like yelling at everybody in the middle of a fight. Um, I feel like it's it's weird to see him be so reserved. I feel like yeah, someone like Jeremy Irons or, or Michael Caine, like I expect them more to have. They, I don't want to say he's a bad actor because he's a good yeah, actor, a but it's just actor. like different actors have different strengths. It was you know? the wrong vibe. Yeah, yeah. I, I just him. realized. Spoiler for the end. Oh, we did a spoiler alert. Barry Keoghan. I can't Keegan, say yeah. Keegan. He's the, the Joker. Joker. At I had the end. to Google that. I was like, who's the, who's he playing? And then when it came up that it was him, I was like. It was the same with the Paul Dano thing. Yeah. I was like, of course it's him. Who yeah. else would it be? That's I- wild because everything that I've seen him in, he has such a thick Irish accent. So I'm just, I'm just surprised that he oh, can get rid of it. Oh, you haven't seen Killing of a Sacred Deer? No. Is it good? It's a wondrous uh, ritual to Is that observe. the same guy that did The, <laughs> the lobster? lobster guy? I yeah. like The Lobster. We should cover those movies. I, I thought, like, there's not that much uh, to that scene. Uh, I was kind of cringe. I was like, ah, oh, no. As yeah. soon as he's like, I like the riddle, the friend. I like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I just was, feel like anytime they do a new Batman and there's no Joker, you got to bring him in at some point. Yeah, we'll see. And I mean, like, who knows? Maybe he has, like, that darkness inside of him that will come out and be awesome. But uh, I really didn't like that makeup. They, they don't show you that much of it, but it was just way too big of a smile. Mm. I don't know. We, we've They'll gone, probably change it. We'll see. Was it do you have faith in that actor to do that role? I haven't seen him enough good stuff. He's a pretty damn he's great. fine actor. Yeah, he's good. Okay. I loved him in a turn. He can really... <laughs> remember in Green Knight? Not the Dark Knight, the Green Knight. Yeah. yeah. He has that kind of quality where you're like scared around him. You don't know what he's yeah. going to do. Yeah. He has an unpredictableness. He looks a little psychopathy. Yeah. He's like, yeah. yeah. He's like short, but he has a knife. You know, yeah. <laughs> you know? you're like, oh, he could. <laughs> yeah. You never know. Fair yeah. enough. And he I might w- call you bad names. David? <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk about the visuals in this movie. I think mm. they really succeeded. Uh, Favorite shot. What is it? Uh, it's the, I mean, it's the Batman lit by gunfire shot for sure. 
Uh, uh, my favorite shot is the upside down shot. He's what? walking out of the burning oh, car. His cape yeah. flying. That's the, a sick the shot. The flames behind him. Bom, bom, it was bom, in the trailer, which bom. is sad. I was beside my sister. She's 15. She was like, I feel like this is kind of iconic. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, it's sick. No shit. Yeah. I think you'll say that word iconic just to mean like cool. Uh, you'll say yeah. it, but your usage of it here is apt. Well, and it's <laughs> cool because that moment's in the trailer where like the penguin's like, ha ha, yeah, fuck you, ha ha. Uh, I got you. I got you. But the way they extended it in the movie, it made it even better than the trailer. And so many, so many times when stuff's in the trailer, when it's in the movie, it doesn't have any impact. But I yeah. felt it so hard yeah. when he like, you see him like line up for the jump or whatever, but then there's like 15 seconds with just the penguin. Then he comes out of it. Oh, it's so sad. Yeah. Uh, that oh, car's man. rules, too. No, that, it's such a good shot. Speaking of the visuals, like, after he lands off the jump or whatever, and he, and he rams the back of Pen Penguin's car, and the back of the car, like, power slides into frame. Yeah. And so it's like, it's like he has complete control of the car. So yeah. the car is just, like, stopping because he has control of it. And in the background, you see the Penguin's car just fucking going crazy. Well, like, and it's, <laughs> what I like about it, too, is, like, you get the inside of the Penguin car shot, and it's flipping. Yeah. And I was like, oh, it's weird that they're not, like, giving me the boom of him rolling around. But it's actually because he's gotten, like, 40, like 30 feet of air, and he's <laughs> yeah. spinning through the air. And then the yeah. next shot is him landing. And you're like, oh, dude. It was such a good stunt. It was yeah, a it great was... car chase. And yeah. what's interesting about it is how many shots in that car chase are just interior of car. Yeah. Like, we're right. just seeing the penguin, we're seeing yeah. uh, Batman. I found it a little disorienting, not disorienting, confusing. Sometimes I was like, which car is which? Like, what's that? Like, when they're doing fast car moves, I had a bit of trouble following the action, but nothing too serious. I thought it was pretty intense with the traffic, and then oh, Penguin finally decides, I just have to cause an accident. Yep. Um, and then they have these other similar interstellar, where they have those cameras mounted to the ships. They've got those those cameras that are just clunk onto the oh, side of the yeah, car. Yeah, yeah. And they do the same thing with that wingsuit scene. Yep. You just get, like, the GoPro kind of yeah. static. Uh, which is just cool. It just it just makes this movie different than the, all the other movies. Yeah. None of them had shots like that. Why can't a Batman movie have a third act that is like great? That I'm like I'm not confused. I know exactly what's going on. It's just escalation. There's just too much there. I feel like they they involve too many characters. They can't stop involving so many characters. Because I think like we got we got we got Batman. We got Catwoman. We got Gordon. We got Penguin. We got the Riddler. We got Falcone. Yeah. Uh, we got, uh, I mean, I guess that's it. But Falcone's dead by it's the just time like, the, like... Yo, why is it just like a lot of movie... Fal Falcone. I thought it was Falcone, wasn't it? Well, in the other movies, the Christopher Nolan ones, yeah. were Falcone. they trying to de-Italianize him? Maybe. Maybe. Or maybe. are they trying to make the make it sound more like Falcon, because they use that later? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, it's definitely Falcone in the other ones. It doesn't matter. I like, I'm just wondering. I like that turn, What's though, up with that? they Calm bring down, him out James. to the light, and then uh, they kill him. I was, Although, uh, I'm, well, oh yeah, that was cool. It, yeah, it was it's weird sniped. that like it, they made such a big deal about Catwoman not killing him, and then like 15 seconds later he's dead. Well, I think what's important is that like what Bruce is trying to stop her from is like if you kill him, yeah, you're gonna ruin your life even more than it is now. You know what's you know, so funny? Like, Rachel Dawes says that to Bruce, right? In Batman Begins, mm. and then there's a then Joe Chill shoots uh, whoever he shoots. Oh yeah, it's a or no, no Joe, Joe Chill gets shot. And then Bruce, there's a shot of Bruce going, looking at him like, oh, I got what I wanted, but I didn't do it. You have the exact same shot of mm. Catwoman looking at her yeah. father that way. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. Fair. That's fair. I think they meant to make that rhyme. No. Like Star Wars does. <laughs> Star Wars does nothing it intentionally. It rhymes. <laughs> um, yeah, I just think like the, the final fight on the catwalk is is pretty good. Uh, it I don't know. It, it feels a little silly like when he's like, grappling the people so they get stuck and stuff and then you never see them again like as soon as they've been like it's like a video game where as soon as he dispatches them and the camera pans away they disappear yeah, like they, yeah. they erase yeah. their fucking figures and yeah. like he he at the final fight he gets taken down I like the final Riddler guy relishing that he's gonna kill the Batman like loads his gun slowly like looks at him I like the time he takes and like he's like I'm fucking gonna kill the Batman yeah I and don't then, even know if it's just relishing it's also kind of like uh, yesterday I was a regular citizen. Am I really doing this? Yeah, am maybe, I, maybe. Am I really in the Capitol? Am yeah. I sitting on the desk? I think yeah. I felt that a little bit uh, f from that character. But then I hated, like, that adrenaline thing was, like, pretty fucking stupid. So Selena Kyle oh, really? like, saves him, and she's like, don't worry, it's all over now. She gets hit in the back of that. I'm like, Didn't, what? why are you not on guard? Like, you took out one dude. Like, there was, like, 50 people no, up I here. No, I thought that was, like, supposed to be the last guy, basically. But, like, how did... She didn't really check. I felt like the movie failed to well, be like. I don't know. She's a. It's, it was stupid to me because she was super wrong a second later, and then yeah, he gets knocked down, and then the adrenaline thing immediately doesn't do it. Like he, you he didn't takes like out that? one guy, and then it's like over, and it doesn't fucking matter. 
And it's like, it's less his rage that made him kick yeah. the shit out of that guy. And it was more, oh, was it a chemical thing? Like, that's yeah, so yeah. much less interesting. Yeah, that's true. It is a bit like, yeah, it's a bit cheap. But I, I, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't think about any of that in the moment. And then did you guys think that like, uh, is, are these nitpicks? Nitpicks. There's two nitpicks I have with that sequence. One is the camera shows you like a transformer or a generator or something that looks like it's going to fall in the water. Yeah. Shock people. It's nothing. It's like, why did you even show the shot? What do you mean it's nothing? Like, he's going to jump in the water and there's no, like, electricity in the water or whatever. But no, he thought that's that... That's why he jumps on the cable. He jumps on the cable happening. and cuts the cable. But it's cable. a different transformer. There's one that's close further on the catwalk and then there's one that's just a dangling cable. And he cuts that one. But is it like... I thought it was like a self-sacrifice thing. Like, why didn't he just jump down? I don't get... I thought it was a self-sacrifice thing too. But then he just, like, gets up. And he up pops and, up and he's fine. Yeah, it was confusing. I didn't like it. I nitpick. think it was like that whole sequence is when it's starting to like yeah. unravel. So, yeah. Like so, if you stop the movie in the first half and be like, "What do you give this movie a 10? I would have been in the nines. Totally. So but, here's here's where here I think I was like feeling that as well, and I was like, "This is all kind of muddy." But then after that, directly after that, it shows him going to rescue the people. I love. And that. he reaches his hand out, and they hesitate because they're like, "You're the." You're the scary Batman guy, like you beat up the bad guys or whatever. But they haven't really seen him be a hero. Yeah. And so I think that um, him jumping on the cable and slicing it or whatever and falling down, that's important because it's showing the first action that he's taking to actually save people instead of instead of just beat people up. Mm -hmm. And so it thematically links to him like not just being vengeance but being a source of hope or whatever. Yeah. Like and, creative instead of destructive. Yeah. He becomes a literal light. Yeah. yeah. And hey. I think I think part of why that was such a nice thing to have at the end is because. We've kind of been missing that from superhero movies. I think so many of these movies are about like there's a big bad powerful bad guy and he's going to do bad things to kill the planet and super superheroes come in and they fight the bad guy and then that's the movie. Yep. But we haven't really seen superheroes be like heroes in the sense that they are like saving people from situations and stuff. That for can be really certain, boring. You get it more from super certain heroes than others like for yeah. example Spider Spider-Man he, he's always saving a couple gotcha. of people and then like a Superman is always carrying someone in his arms and putting them down to safety and whizzing away. That's, That's gonna true. be in a Superman yeah. movie, but not so much in Batman. Yeah, Batman hasn't, we haven't seen that so much, so it was definitely refreshing. We see him stare at boys. Well, one boy. <laughs> that I, was great! I Oh, that was great. See, I didn't like it. I, like, I liked it the first time, and then they kept having him, like, stare at him, and I'm like, I, f I fucking get it. He sees himself in this boy, and then, like, I was like, okay, two times, that's enough. Three times? Okay, four times? Holy fuck. Fuck. Wait, what? I thought and he, it was like, like he's a the first times. person he saved. Oh, it's like four times that he like has an interaction with this kid where it's like, look, it's Bruce Wayne. He sees himself. <laughs> oh. Did not like that. Interesting. Yeah, I thought that was. Uh, I disagree. I thought it was really, really cool. But that's fair. That's valid. Movie made me feel stupid. Okay. <laughs> first one was definitely. Good. I think. Uh, I think the first time it happens, he he's looking at the kid, and it's like you, we as our audience realize that like, oh, this kid just lost a father just like he did, hmm. and then Nirvana comes in. Uh, twice. Oh, that's a nitpick for me. Yeah, nitpick. Play, play that song twice. Oh, okay. What song was it? Well, okay. a Nirvana song. Yeah, they brought it back later. I, I was just like, okay, the last time we heard it was like two and a half hours ago. So it's been, it's been a while. It's okay to like refresh it. All right. But when it first comes in, I just thought it would like it did such a good job of like uh, establishing the tone. It's not just like we're a crazy superhero movie and like we're gonna play these like triumphant themes as we come in and save people. It's like this is dark. This is like gritty. Uh. This guy is like depressed, but at the same time being driven by this like vengeance spirit. You know, it's like, I don't know. I just love the vibe. It was a good vibe. What do you guys think of that? Um, what do you guys think of that Batman theme in this movie? That kind of like imperial march, I like the it. funeral dirge. I thought it was cool. Uh, I think it's cool, and it it really does accentuate like the the fear of Batman. Like yeah. he's like a, he's a he's an imposing figure, and the music really supports that. Yeah, he's yeah. coming at you slow motion. Big fan. What did you think of on the music? What did you think of them using Ave Maria as a like recurring motif and then like turning it into a minor key thing? I did you notice? Yeah, no. It was I thought like it was interesting, but it's also kind of like the most basic, yeah, like, choir th song you can use. It, it felt like okay, you didn't really think too hard about this one. Yeah, I mean, fine. like I thought I, I think I appreciated it as like a, okay, you're taking this like well known song and then you're like modifying it and making it I into like, like a recurring version. theme. Yeah. Like fair enough, but like. Yeah, if it wasn't Ave Maria, that would have been better because it's like we all know it's been it's been used so many times. Yeah. yeah, big nitpick. I kind of mentioned it briefly, but when the DA is about to explode and Batman like puts his face against his face and he's like, 
give me the answer. And but he's like uh, inches the whole away. Audience is like, like dude, get back. away yeah, from the you bomb. You have like three seconds left. You're not gonna get yeah. the answer. Stupid. Is the idea that and he that, like got his arms up in time? Armor doesn't work that way with no. bombs. And he like, it's stupid because like the next sequence, the stakes are set up because he was knocked out by the explosion, and it's like he should never have been knocked out by that explosion. That's stupid. That Why? was dumb. Wait, why not? Because he should have known that like, oh, he should have oh, gone yeah, away. Yeah, I also sure, think sure. that just generally, by the end of the movie, like in the club scene and stuff, I'm like, okay, he's they're shooting at him, but he's he's taking a couple bullets and it's it's turning out all right. But by the end of the movie, these people have rifles just feet away from him. I'm like, yeah, this is too many gun interactions, man. And You're he, dead. Yeah. He has too many face exposed. I've seen him take his cowl off. It's like a quarter inch thick and pliable. Like, yeah, no one can hit headshots. Nobody yeah, gets just hit a a, aim for the chin. Aim for the chin. <laughs> My uh, big nitpick, I love the Batmobile. I hate everyone staring at it rev up. Oh, my God. It's so long. Like They would have like, just started shooting at him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They're just like watching, and it's like the light turns on. Huh? Huh? And yeah. they're like, rawr, rawr. Penguin's like, what's that? And it's like, <laughs> and everyone's like, just, huh? See, but and then it charges, and it's like, I don't know. It's a like, movie. You have to do It's that way stuff. too long. They're all like, their adrenaline's going. They've been firing guns at each other. They'd be like, they would just start shooting. See, I thought it was just kind of like, it was it was recurring that theme of like Batman is in the shadows and he's coming and you know that he's dangerous but you can't it's like the predator prey response where you're just kind of like this thing's dangerous but you're also feeling awe okay. and so you're like okay. I'm frozen because like I've, please dominate me yeah dominate me daddy okay. Batman okay nitpick from the same scene yo dominate Catwoman me. you're strong bad, daddy. bad daddy. but like I don't even know Dad if man. Batman could drive by a bag of money on a motorcycle and swoop it no, up like that, those are so heavy. Yeah. And you're like 100 pounds. He's like, Catwoman. It's fine. Like, <laughs> it's a super I, good On movie. a motorcycle, like from a car. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. Maybe Batman could do it. But it's just like. <laughs> it's just supposed to be a slick move. I, I agree. It's not believable, but there's lots in this movie. That it, no, bags matter. of yeah. money are just not heavy enough in any movie except maybe Heat. Right. You know what? Hit, oh. hit pick? That they call him Vengeance? I love oh, that. Yeah. I like that Penguin calls him Miss. Don't worry, Mr. Vengeance here. Yeah. He don't bite. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> and then Selena calls him Vengeance later. And I'm like, okay. Helps remind What's up, us. Sub vengeance. <laughs> v, V man. Yeah. V. This is m kind of broader than a hit pick, but the pacing in this movie rules. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. At least it does for most of the movie. Yeah. It, there's a couple of scenes where it falls back down, but in the, at least in the first two thirds, it's just so relentless. Yeah. Mm. At any time it slows down a bit, like when he's in the hospital with Alfred, you know, we're t it's giving space. We're taking the time to feel what we feel. And then boom, there's this heist. And then boom, that's a car chase. And it's, yeah, for the movie being three hours, they did a pretty damn good totally. job. And they really the last did. Forty-five minutes, I was not worried at all about, about time. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm I'm impressed. I, I mean, I, I, I feel like the question is, why is it three hours? Is it because in this era, everything's creeped up? Like right? ninety minutes is just never happens now. Two hours is the new ninety minutes. Two and a half is pretty normal. Three, it's like if you're making an epic, it has if you're to making be an three. epic. You're competing with a 10 episode show. Yeah. I think that uh the DC movies that has uh that approved this or the greenlit this this movie, you know, they're getting a little dangerous. They're getting a little uh reckless. <laughs> yeah, they're just like, you know what? People if people come and see this movie, that's a win on Marvel. You know, let's just They could have taken 10 to 15 out if of this. If they if they're going to okay. like the movie, if they're going to come see the movie, it's Batman. Let's just do 3 hours. I could we do 3 hours, guys? Give us an intermission, <laughs> you yeah. Yeah. Get Matt. chance to get some popcorn. I will say in support of the good pacing, I really like the visual pace too where when things are like more calm, the everyone just moves a little slower, the camera moves slower, mm. and then the moments of violence, everything's cutting fast yes. again and like it that's not an uncommon thing, but they do it really effectively in this movie and I think it really helps to make all the violence feel more impactful. Mm. And so the pacing of visually, 10 out of 10. Oh, there was Love a it. really sweet kind of cut they did, but I realized this morning that all the notes I took in the theater, my pen was not working no. for half of them. So there's just... Oh, man. There's this, I don't, do you guys remember? Wait! Have you tried shining a black light on it? <laughs> there might be a cipher. Or jizz. <laughs> <laughs> Did you... Do you remember there was a match frame where it was like somebody was revving something and it turned out to be something else? It, ah, I, ah! It's vaguely familiar. You know how I love those yeah. matches. Yeah. My, uh, my last hit pick is the way the Riddler's journal is subdivided. I think that's such a cool little thing where... Most people would just like use the lines and fill it out, but he has it like subdivided vertically and horizontally. So like each section is kind of a different mm. size because like his mind is weirdly compartmentalized, yeah. and so he sees the page not as we see it. I thought that was like a cool little. I love little man, touch. yeah, and I, I it again, 
Seven, very, very much like echoing the the kind of uh, visual motifs of Seven of having these like weird scribbly notes and stuff and like the stuff on the walls mm-hmm. and whatnot. Like, yeah, we've seen this like serial killer stuff with like a bunch of other things, but it felt it felt pretty fresh. It felt like it felt pretty believable in this yeah. one. Like it, it didn't seem hokey. Totally. And it didn't feel like it was just like, oh, we saw Seven and we're just recreating that. It's yeah, like, no, yeah. this, this is its own thing. I felt, speaking of hokey, in the first scene where he's beating up all the guys in the subway, I was kind of sitting there like, you know how there's been, I think it was a dude like in Florida or something like that who was like trying to be like a vigilante superhero. He had some body armor on. He was just walking around and like just like trying to do good. Like the, in real life, this happened no, like I in the States a few years ago. No. It just made me think of that. I'm like, Batman, you literally are that guy. You're well, just like it? some dude who's like, I'm going to go around and like if I see a fight, I'm going to just intervene. But this, like, is, this is why I like that the character was so weird because in order to do this shit, you have to be a freaking weirdo. Like you have to be so mentally messed up so I like that in this one we kind of get like that Bruce Wayne isn't just like a hmm, yes I'm a billionaire ninja man who decides to use my powers to blah blah blah. It's like no you're fucked up. You're a weirdo. <laughs> you dress up as a bat and go on the streets and beat up random people. Yeah, yeah he's so self actualized. It's like what if you just had unlimited resources to spend time doing whatever you would do? Yeah. And some people are like, yeah, I probably still work, <laughs> and I would work at beating up criminals. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 totally. He's obsessed. Oh, um, I have one last. Okay. Let's hear it. That's when uh, they plug the clearly awful thumb drive into Gordon's computer. Yeah, dog, dog. What? It's Batman. He's way more smart about IT shit than that. He should have been like, "I've got my 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 bat sandbox. Put it yeah. in there. Yeah. Let's check for this virus." As a James Bond fan, yeah, I, I know like you had that thing yeah. to do. I yeah. feel like exactly. I explain that in my mind by saying Gordon's kind of a boomer in this situation, and Batman doesn't give a shit about anything as long as he gets the answer to what he's looking for, Fair. right? He's like, okay, your ha- your computer's going to be hacked, but also I'm going to find out what I yeah. what I need. It's, it's a nitpick. Yeah. It's a nitpick. It's not a real problem. Here's a hit pick. Zoe Kravitz is hot as hell. Yes. Oh, my god. She's super hot, especially in the club scene. Very cool. Very cool. Right. Very awesome. It's Wait, too, sort though. of a mid pick. I don't know how to feel about this. The yeah, fact he is. That, like, kind of chicken lips, though. I wasn't sure about him in the cowl. Him. I'd kiss him in the cowl. Are you talking about Robert, Robert Pattinson? Pattinson? That little beak. He's a sex symbol. He's like he's like he's got the weird he's got the weird look Dude, that people like. Man's had a renaissance. He's, <laughs> he's people. He's come around. That's one of the him. top actors in yeah. Hollywood. Yeah. I would say yeah. he's and in the, the top ten. I like if you would have told people ten years ago, like oh guy Edward Cullen's going to be the new Batman. Edward people Cullen. are going to be pumped about it. <laughs> no one would have believed you, but man, he's, he's a here. little small. I kind of wish. Yeah. Well, and uh, he so I saw a story enough that some people were pounds. really excited about where the studio's like, hey, can you get Jack for the movie? And he's like, nah. <laughs> and I was like, he was fine. Like he was fit, but he wasn't. Yeah. But it's like also like. Why not? <laughs> right. <laughs> like, he looked not? fine in the suit, and he he looked athletic, but yeah. he just wasn't like Christian Bale size. Yeah. Christian Bale's like, yeah, I'm gonna gain sixty pounds of muscle coming off a of machinist. Boom. Yeah. Now there's the now there's the conflicting need in me to find out how this Batman got his like fighting skills and stuff. They imply that like Alfred taught him how. Yeah, to fight, that was interesting. But I'm like, Alfred's not gonna teach you how to beat every single fighter in the city. Like you're you're the best. You're a super, you're a world class. Like well, just because it's like slightly different universe doesn't mean that he didn't get trained by the League I know. Of Shadows. So, the, so the, there's a the conflicting Malayas. interest to be like I want to find out, but at the same time I don't want them to really do all these flashbacks in the sequel. Well, I feel like because they're right, doing a sequel, right? Yeah. Oh, I'm sure they this got it. Hugely successful movie. I feel Le Batman. Nin, le le Batman. <laughs> uh, El, El Batman. Batman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think having ninjas in this universe would feel a little bit off, but yeah. they might be able to make it work. We'll see. Related to that, I thought the kid in a ninja outfit in the beginning of the movie, I was like, is that a real ninja? <laughs> because we've we've had ninjas yes. in Batman before. I, I was like, is this an, is this a real like, assassin? Is that a kid? Is that a costume? Yeah. Did he actually kill that guy? And then the yeah, dad yeah. comes in and it's like, I thought it was actually pretty brilliant of them to do this because I actually wasn't sure. It became apparent pretty quick. But like, I actually wasn't sure whether this guy was actually getting killed or not. Yeah. Totally. Because there's yeah. like something laying on the ground in the room already. Yeah. So yeah. They did that on purpose for sure. Um. So. A sort of a mid pick. I didn't know how to feel about it because when the they're in the subway and the guys are beating up the guy, he's, not, he's Asian, and I'm like, is this an anti Asian hate thing? Is this like a, a big problem? Is this a commentary on Maybe. this, or was it just like, oh, we filmed this guy, this scene with an Asian guy, and then later the anti Asian stuff came up, and now what? it happens to align? What? I guess when we can't answer this question. Stuff come up. What? When did anti Asian stuff? That was like last. Well, just because of COVID. In fall. Oh, I thought. Oh, like, I thought you meant in life. the movie. No, no, I was no. like, what? No, but yeah, I saw hey, you were just went article about that. It's happening in Vancouver too. Oh, man, the last two no. years are a blur. My one complaint was that I wish they didn't have the Joker because in my head I had created some continuity between the Joker movie and this, and I thought that the Joker, um, nah. the Joker 
henchmen were like like the cult of Joker. Mm. They were like worshiping the legend of the Joker, and I thought that'd be a cool. That'd time. be kind of cool. And head cannon, man. Yeah, nice. Way, head cannon, way cooler. But, yeah, uh, I don't know. I, I okay. I'm it's I'm totally okay. okay with them not connecting any of these Batman movies. Like this is a new Batman universe. It's basically yeah. like the Dark Knight is start start uh, starting again. Yeah. Yo, don't do connect it to any of the other things. Do you think DC is just gonna put the and then hero name? Oh my like God. the well, Suicide Squad. The Flash? Well, that's I what they did. Are, they already did. That. Yeah. <laughs> they did. The, that's yeah. what I'm saying. They did the Suicide Squad. Now they have the Batman. Isn't are they just gonna I think Superman? The, I think the Flash movie is called the Flash. Well, he's no. called the Flash. That's what his name is. But he's also called the Bat. No. No, well, <laughs> well, like, it, depending on the iteration, but yeah, like Scarecrow calls Flash is always the begins. Flash. Yeah, the Green Lantern. They need to do a good Green Lantern movie. The they Aquaman. Can't. You can't do a good live action Green Lantern movie. The powers doesn't work. I it's, don't know. I too, feel like it's too uh, silly. I like, feel like silly. oh, I want to punch people. I'm gonna summon a train to punch him harder. Like it just looks stupid. Well, you in don't live have action. to get a train. You can you you literally gonna... use anything. No, but that's the problem is you can use you can use anything. And if, but if you don't, it's boring. Like you well, can make your fist super big. Yeah. Like, that sucks. That's but like that's, such an uncreative use of that power. But that's why the, it, even that looks there's funny. There's potential. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's potential for creativity because like there are thousands of Green Lanterns and they all use their powers a little differently. So it's like this guy might like these type of con- constructs, but this guy might like summon beasts. I think they and should stuff. just make a really good animation. Dude, in movie. Inception, like suddenly a train comes blasting into town out of nowhere. Yeah, but it has to cool. be like tied. It has to be the color of his powers and like, oh, it's yeah, just, like, you can do it. Get away I think that. that like you look at like Thor Ragnarok and Guardians of the Galaxy and stuff and like Infinity War, like things get, things have gotten real crazy and cosmic in the Marvel universe and I think that I think that people are ready for a good Green Lantern movie. Okay. I think we can do it. I'm ready for Spawn. I think we can do it. Yo, I think I'm ready for the segment Spawn? we call Now Playing. Well, I've been playing lots of Elden Ring and I've been watching Peacemaker, active verb, because uh, keeping's not good Peace. enough. Yeah, David uh, was uh, saying earlier that he keeps calling it Peacekeeper instead of Peacemaker. That's the weapon in Apex. Um, it's <laughs> If you guys like The Suicide Squad, you're going to love Peacemaker. It's exactly the same tone. It fits exactly in. It does some crazy goofy shit just like the movie. Um, but I actually got way more invested than I thought. It starts strong, got going, and I cried like three times. I felt mm. it and Whoa. it did some really cool stuff. Uh, and I'm super excited for more. I love John Cena. Nice. And he I was he, like upset. He's awesome. I was upset when they announced the spin-off because I'm like the movie was fine. I, I think like I forgot what I get. I get, thought I gave it like a six point something. Probably. And I'm like, they did a spin off of this? Yeah. Because like, but apparently it's hilarious. It's super funny and it starts yeah. strong too. So you only need to commit to one episode, I'd say. And you'll oh, know. Oh, you don't have the, to like, yeah, wait yeah. till you get to episode four. No, that's bullshit. This episode. Arcane. I, <laughs> so that's good. And then I've been playing lots of Elden Ring, although I did stop. It is very overrated. I don't care what Elden anyone Ring? says. Elden Ring? Super hot take, overrated. Hot take. It's good. It's very good. If you like Souls games, you'll like it. If you don't, you won't like it. It's the best take on Souls franchise ever. Uh, but man, people are so wrong with like, it's a very interesting open world. It's living and breathing. No, it's not. It's a bunch of a- characters and idle animations <laughs> waiting for you to show up. Yeah. Uh, but it's Waiting for you to combat- find the journal entries yeah. to pe- piece yeah. together the it's, story. Oh, you have a, a merchant. He's going to be standing against a wall in an almost T-pose waiting for you to talk to him. <laughs> These are minor complaints. Those are nitpicks. The game is awesome. If you love that style of combat, the combat is right. flawless. It's, it's all incredible. About, it's about the gameplay, yeah. not so much the like story, narrative, environment. Yeah, I'm a big immersion guy and this game has negative 10 immersion. Oh, okay. speaking of immersion, this was like a weird thing I realized watching this Batman movie, uh, not to derail our now playing, but I realized that uh, lens flares are immersion breaking. Mm. Because there's a lens flare at the end of this movie, and it just, it tells you, you are viewing this through a camera. Oh, interesting. You're, there's glass between you and the characters. Yep. Okay. And I never thought of them from that perspective before. No. Anyways, I've mm. been watching Beforeiners. Have you heard of that show? No. Beforeiners? It's a, yeah. It's a Norwegian show where there's refugees, but they come from different times. Oh, that's interesting. Huh. So it's kind of cool. Um, so like, they don't know why, but these time traveling people from Oslo arrive. So they're either from the Viking era, the like uh, Victorian era, or Stone uh, like Stone Age. And it's cool because they get to talk about um, they get to talk about refugees and immigration with while removing some variables. So th- oh. you know, a, a lot of the one variable with immigrant discourse is like go back to where you came from. It's like, well, we were here first. Right. Like right, this is right. where I'm from. That's yeah. gone. Race is gone. Like they're all because hmm. they're all the same people. So yeah, huh. yeah it, it's okay, pretty. It's pretty interesting. interesting. That's really cool. Wait, is is it English? It's subtitled. And where do I get it? I don't know. It's on. Uh, it's on Plex. <laughs> <laughs> it's on Plex. <laughs> nice. Um, my now playing hasn't really changed. I'm still working through God of War, the game, and I'm still. Well, I finished Euphoria. Nice. 
Good ending? I mean, I don't know. I don't want to spoil it, but I, there's a lot of discourse about it online. I think it was like, uh, I like how it ended, but I also thought it was like sort of inconsistent with the, I don't know what else to say about this, okay. but up next I will be watching the Kanye uh, documentary on Netflix. But, but oh, I haven't heard of that. Genius, yeah. He's a fascinating it? character to I me. Think you said that weird, how's it spelled? I think it's spelled J-E-E-N dash Y-U-S, or Y-U-H-S. it's supposed to be like Yeezus. Yeah, Yeezus, because he, yeah. Anyways, I'll be talking about that next time, I guess we do a now playing. Oh, I'm excited. Oh, well, that's it, folks. That's it. That's it. That's all. Don't forget that we love you so much. <laughs> <laughs> and hold on to hope, just like Batman. I'm trying to end on a positive. I'm trying oh, to end on a really hey, yeah, very warm. Your mailbag questions, tweet at us. Oh, yeah, please give us mailbag. At TGM Pod. Uh, the mailbag questions, really, it's better if you uh, email us, though. Yeah. Email us hello at they're just movies.com. You can also comment on the YouTube video. That's decent. You can tell us anything. Yeah, give us. You can ask us anything. Give us good, heartfelt questions, but also some crazy theoretical. Some fun ones. I don't want yeah. some lame shit in there. Totally. Just can... tell us how your life is going. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not joking. Let you're, us know. Okay. What's going on? <laughs> Riley wants to know. All right. Bye, everybody. <laughs>